Hello YouTube, this is Nick911 and we are doing an overview of XCOM Enemy Unknown, a game that I just recently pre-ordered. Um, it cost it a ton, but I think it, it was worth it and I had a um, pretty big uh, Amazon gift card account, so uh, I was I was okay with it. I think I had like 50 or $50 with my gift card, so it only cost me like 10 so. Um, we have Jared here, and uh, we made a slide for you guys. It took a really long time, so I hope that you keep watching, and I, I ho also hope that you like it and that you learn something new about this epic game that comes out on Tuesdays. Well, Tuesday for North America, and um, and what would that be? Friday for uh, the UK and other countries. So here we just have the main thing. It's created by Fireaxis and 2K Games. Um, Fireaxis, uh, the um, creator of the original game, Sid Meier, um, he was uh, one of the creators of the original game. And um, uh, I, I forget what that company was called, but uh, in like 1998, uh, the, the company kind of got bought and Sid Meier left to uh, create a new um, company called Fireaxis and after a really long time um, some guy called Jake Sullivan who was basically Sid Meier's lieutenant came in and asked Sid Meier if he could do a new XCOM game and Sid Meier said, said, said yes and so Jake Sullivan um, was uh, um, creating the game for about a year when he asked for Sid Meier's help, so th this is basically um, a um, Jake Sullivan main director or uh, creator, and then Sid Meier, uh, creator of the original, is the co-creator. So here we just have the main menu. So uh, Jared's also here. So say hi, Jared. Hi. Yeah. So next we have the research. Uh, these two are um, di different uh, types of researching. Here we uh, see that e every time you go to your base, you get to see your current research, and um, you see the name of that. The arc throw is basically so you, you can stun your um, enemies and, and bring them back to um, re research the live instead of having to do the autopsies here, like the sectoid autopsy and the thin man autopsy. And it also shows you how many days are left. So, yeah, and here, down here, it shows how many scientists you have. Uh, you only get to see that when you are um, uh, on the laboratory screen. Um, so, here we have all of this uh, just some writing that you can read if uh, you want to. But I'm just going to uh, leave, leave that there for you. Um, for a bit so you can pause it uh, anytime that I'm talking. So here we have the alien materials which um, you, you can see what that's about right there. Um, I don't really know what you get to do after that uh, because we actually don't know everything about the game, we just know stuff that has been revealed and I, I only know so much um, with my 12 hours probably more of research. So next we have the old art compared to the, the new art. Here you see the UFO here and you can see the UFO inside there. You can also see what the explosions used to look like and um, the weapons. Here are the weapons and the graphics are just, they just greatly dip, differ and all that so. Yeah it's kind of pixely. Yeah very pixely actually. And um, here uh, you can actually like know what the sectoids are instead of just having some kind of weird um, slender a aliens just like right there. And I don't really know what the RB and the LBs are, maybe just uh, what you aim at. And here you see uh, he can fire a rocket, uh, he can do overwatch which is basically you wait until an enemy comes into your line of sight, and when they do, you get a reaction shot at them. So, more text, and um, here you can see, um, it's basically just that, but it's aliens, and it's at different points of, of the screen. 
So next we have explosives. So in the old game, uh, it, it was it's kind of hard uh, to know if your grenade would hit, or if it was too far, or if um, or if uh, how many people you would hit with it. But here it shows you the the bubble of where it would hit, who who it would hit, and what it would hit. Like would it break those crates? Would it break those crates and all that? So. Um, and you can also see that, like, at the top, it has the two alien heads. It shows you how many aliens are on the map that you know of. Yeah, I uh, told them that in the, the last thing. Um, and uh, so this guy is a assault class. Uh, I don't think that... Yeah, this guy is just a rookie, as you can see from his, his sign there. Uh, when they become a, a squaddy, they get their class... Um, this guy would probably be an assault guy because he's using an assault rifle, and he would get the um, run and gun, which is Jared's favorite um, perk, right, Jared? Yeah. Yeah. And you can also see um, how much ammo the gun has in it. Yeah. From the, um, yeah. Yeah you, yeah, you can't really see how much shots you have, but you can see that, that this guy can maybe get one more shot and then he has to reload, and that is what the reload... Um, thing looks like. So, also, uh, there are these blue things. Um, the blue things uh, are ba basically halfway points. Um, if you go to the... if you're in inside the, the blue, you you can uh, move and shoot at, at, at this in the same turn. If you go outside the blue, uh, which is called dashing, and there will be an or orange line, um, then you can only move, but uh, you can't shoot. Um, but say there's someone on Overwatch and you are dashing, it makes you harder to hit. So, also here we just see the little a animation. Um, I think this guy is a heavy because of his his rocket launcher. So, yeah. So we also have some more text there, and all that. So, next slide we have um, three of the monsters. We have the Berserker. We have the sectoid and we have the chrysalid. Now, the berserker is uh, a melee alien, kind of like um, the chrysalid, uh, but uh, it doesn't have the zombie effect. And the berserker um, does a lot of damage. It usually has a ton of health, and um, the uh, berserker um, does has an ability called the bull rush and that uh, ma makes it so he kind of has range, but you can't really use it from that far away. Um, and you have to target a specific uh, thing, like uh, you can't, I don't think that you can target a person with Bull Rush. And a thing I learned in a video is that when you're using Bull Rush and you're trying to attack a person, uh, you need to have the Bull Rush go like right past the person. It, it can't uh, go right in front of them. Um, for some strange reason. And um, so sectoids, uh, sectoids have the mind abilities. The commanders can use mind control, I think, for five turns. And then, um, and uh, yeah, and they also have something, I think it's called mind merge. And what that does is it uh, buffs the person that, that it is merging, gives them more critical chance, and it also gives them more health. So... Do you have anything to input on the Berserker or Sectoid, Jed? Um, you can see that the Sectoid is like, it, he looks like the weakest one in the... Yeah, the Sectoids only have three health, which is the lowest amount of health that there is, besides the civilians, which, which only have one health. And, um, so down here we have the Chrysalids, and Chrysalids have about ten health, I, I believe, and... They have uh, certain abilities, like the zombie ability, um, where uh, when it kills a human, um, the human turns in into a zombie, and we'll get into that more later. So, next we have the Thin Man, the Muton, and we have the Floater. So, first with the Muton, um, so Mutons have 10 health, uh, and in uh, the, the previous game, in the original, Mutons uh, were pretty hard to kill. You had to get, like, three shots on them at least. And, um, it's kind of the same in this game, but there are stuff like triangle hits and stuff like that, so. And Mutons also have some of the most powerful guns, 
um, well, uh, in the alien group that we know of. And um, so next we have the Thin Man, and the Thin Man is actually the poison. Um, he is the uh, poison alien. He's the only poison alien that we know of um, from now since the original. Uh, there may have been some poison aliens in the uh, expansions, which I don't think were that good besides the Apocalypse one. And um, so down here we have the floater. Floaters can fly. Um, just like the Archangel suit, which we will get into later, and um, they can get into high buildings, with, which makes them harder to kill or even see early on. And they usually have semi-good weapons. Sometimes they have plasma weapons, but um, you might not find that very early on. So, yeah, and now back to the chrysalids. So the, the chrysalids, when they attack humans, and it, this is only humans, no, like, um... You can't attack another alien and have their effect. So when they attack humans, they kind of, I guess, impregnate them with their eggs or something like that. So when they attack a human, um, and the human has to die, um, the human becomes a zombie with 10 health. Um, and then uh, after several turns, uh, a white chrysalid, uh, some people call them bone chrysalids, I called them bone chrysalids as well, as you just heard. And um, those crit chrysalids have the same abilities as the main crit chrysalids, but I think they have a little more health. So, next we have the globe. So, uh, do you have anything to say about the globe, Jared? Um, yeah. Um, you can see, like, um, it like, gives you an overview of what you can do, like your missions on the side. And then it gives you your, like, upcoming events, like everything that's happening. Yeah. So basically what we see here is on the top we get to see uh, the old globe, which is um, pretty low graphics. Uh, but I think it's a bit uh, better compared to the uh, attack graphics when you go down with your troops. Not quite as pixely, but it's still pretty bad. Um, and you can see the intercept, uh, that is basically for intercepting U UFOs that are flying around. Bases. In the old game, you could have multiple bases, but in, in the new game, you only get to have one. But you, you get to choose, like, what country that, um, the base will be in. But the bad thing is that you can't, uh, essentially choose where in the country. It usually just, um, puts it in a fixed location, usually somewhere in the middle. And um, here we see that uh, the time, you can, uh, five sec seconds, um, five minutes and all that. And here you, you just uh, press Y to keep scanning for UFOs until you scan for one. And I think it goes really fast. Um, and uh, it, and it, it stops when stuff like the researches are done or the funding council reports are done or when... Um, the engineers are done building some something. So here you can see the scan for UFOs. That's there, March 2015. Uh, don't really know what that is there for. And there's also some weird thing going on with with Canada that they have not revealed yet. Um, but they 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 say that um, Canada is just out of um, the, the council from the, the start. I think that maybe that is where. Um, the main base uh, is going to be, and you have to, to do that to, to get to, to, to Mars and go to that other place. I think it's like Trip Teton or something like that. I don't know what it's called. Do you remember what it's called, Jared? No. Yeah, okay. But uh, you guys can just comment that. So um, next we have flying, which is what I uh, said that I would get into earlier. So here we have the floater. Um, attacking uh, a rookie, Polina Kozlova. No, I, I actually don't think that this is a rookie. Maybe it's like, um, no, oh no, no, that's just the support icon. So, um, it looks like she has a laser cannon, and that's not, not really the flying part of it. So, floaters have this jetpack thing. Well, they kind of have to because they don't have any legs. I kind of like to th think of them as um, uh, mutons cut in half because uh, floaters have four health 
which is just a bit more than sectoids, but they also have um, okay we we weapons compared to the sectoids. So they can do a little more damage because the sectoids used to only do like two unless they critical hit. And um, photos also get to float. So, And on the bottom here, we also see the Archangel suit, which just let lets your troops fly, and it's really good for snipers because uh, snipers, you can get a skill that makes your accuracy and your critical chance um, buff wet, 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 wet when you're higher up. And you can see that there is also a chrysalid there, so if he did not have the Archangel suit, he would be in danger of uh, becoming zombified. Um, so, um, I yeah? I have something to say. Yes? Um, um, you can see, you know, you said how you can see the, um, the percent to hit and stuff. You can also see it when you're aiming at the person. Yeah. And um, on the top left, it shows you how many aliens in it. The one that's lit up, um, if that's the one that you're aiming at. Well, I actually didn't know know that, so Jerry actually knows more than XCOM. Well, not, probably not more, but, but he knows some stuff that I don't know. But that's just a little tidbit, so that doesn't count Jared. So, um, so basically, um, I, I think that flying in this game is like a thousand p times uh, percent, uh, better, that, that was just kind of a mumble thing, um, than the original, because in the original you couldn't really tell uh, it was flying besides the hover tanks, um, and the hover tanks were actually really good, but um, for the flying suits in the original game, you couldn't really tell if he was flying or in the, um, the uh, interface for flying wasn't very developed, so in this game it's, it's a lot be better, so um, that's it for flying. Now we go to the abilities. So here we have Sid Meier. He is a support. He's also a colonel. He, for some reason, has not been in any missions or kills. That's just Sid Meier. Can't really blame him because it's Sid, yeah. Sid Meier. His nickname's the Godfather. Yeah, because Sid Meier is is just he's basically one of the creators of the original. XCOM that came out in 1994, which in my view was the best one, the Apocalypse one, was was pretty good, but not that good, and the other ones just weren't that good. Terror from the Deep was just too hard. Um, it was fine, but it was just way too hard. So here, um, this is actually one of the things that Fire Axis added to the, the game, which was the abilities. Uh, they also added the classes, they also added... Um, the defense and the health, I think the health and, um, I think basically everything they added was really good, in my view. So, uh, here for the support, support, um, support classes, you get the, um, smoke grenade, and actually every class gets, uh, a first, um, a first ability for, for supports, it's smoke grenade for, sorry, for, uh, assaults, it is run and gun. Um, for snipers, it, it is the headshot. And for the heavy, it is the fire rocket, which is just the rocket launcher that I was talking about earlier. So, do you have anything to say about the abilities, Jed? Mm, no, not really. Okay. Well, that was uh, the end of our first overview of XCOM, and I hope you like it. So, bye.